Good afternoon and welcome to this session of the AgriBility Virtual National Training Workshop. I'm Paul Jones for those who don't know me. And this afternoon we're going to be featuring a presentation by Michael O'Gorman from the Farmer Veteran Coalition, one of our nonprofit uh, collaborators that works with the National AgriBility Project. We're very thankful to have them as part of our team. Before we start with the actual presentation, just a few basic webinar instructions for those who have not participated in these webinars before. You do need speakers or headphones for the audio, as we are not using a phone connection. You can check your connection speed via the meeting menu at the top left of your menu. And uh, also, if you have questions about what's being shared during the presentation, please feel free to type those in the chat window. It's on the left side of your screen, and just hit the little bubble icon to make those visible. If you have a web microphone and would like to ask your questions verbally during the question and answer period at the end, just use the raise hand icon at the top of your screen, a little person with their hand raised up there, and we will attempt to enable your microphone so that you can ask that question verbally. After the presentation itself, we will do our four survey questions, and we are recording this webinar. We've got the uh, link listed there on your screen for where it will be archived. If you have any technical problems during the webinar, please type those into the chat window also. And if you are unable to use the chat window for some reason, you can send us an email via the agribility at agribility.org email address. Some of the issues we have had in the past include echo, and uh, sometimes it's caused by being logged in more than once. So log out, and uh, hopefully that will solve your problem. If you, we are disconnected with our presenter, please hang on, and we will reconnect as quickly as we can. And if you are disconnected as a participant, please just log back in again. I think we do have a few new people on this particular webinar. So you may not be familiar with AgriBility. We are a program that's sponsored by the US Department of Agriculture, and we focus on issues of disability in agriculture, all types of agriculture, and all types of disabilities. Every one of our AgriBility projects around the country is a partnership between the state's land-grant university and at least one nonprofit disability services organization. Right now, we have 20 funded projects around the country covering 22 states, as one of those projects is a three-state three regional project. There is one national AgriBility project that supports the state projects, and that is here at Purdue University through the Breaking New Ground Resource Center. And we have several partners on our project, including Goodwill of the Finger Lakes, the Arthritis Foundation Heartland Region, and our evaluation team through the University of Illinois and also Colorado State University. You can find out much more about AgriBility through the agribility.org website. I know that's probably a little hard to see on your screen, but the address is simply www.agribility.org. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to Michael O'Gorman, and I'm going to shut off my camera and microphone. And he can turn on his camera and microphone, and then I will plan to return after his presentation for the poll questions to start our question and answer period. So. Thank you, Paul. Um, this is Michael O'Gorman, the founder and director of the Farmer Veteran Coalition. Um, I want to thank Paul and AgriBility for inviting me to speak today. Um, we've been a, a proud supporter and partner of the National AgriBility Project. It's in the AgriBility chapters across the country. 
It's a, been an, a really important part as uh, we support veterans coming out of the military and entering careers in agriculture. We're dealing, uh, we've been dealing with about 2,000 of them across the country, and we probably have a close to between 30 and 50 percent of them that come to us with disability ratings from the Veteran Administration. So a little bit about FEC in general. Our, the mission of the Farmer Veteran Coalition is mobilize, mobilizing veterans to feed America. We began as a project in 2009. I started it myself. One farmer, one pickup truck after a 40-year career in production agriculture. Um, the last 20 years of my farming career, I was a uh, farm manager, a production manager for three of the larger uh, organic vegetable companies on the West Coast. So I got to have an exciting career of farming um, throughout the state of California in the um, southwest part of Arizona, where some of us with AgriBility were just last week, and uh, into the northern parts of Mexico and Baja California. The what we believe in and why we started is that we noticed that we had two major problems that could possibly help each other. And one was the one to two million veterans that were trans transitioning out of the military post their uh, post 9-11 service, um, particularly a large amount of them in the last year or two uh, um, as the military reduces its number of active service men and women. And combining that with our need for more farmers and uh, more young talent and young people going into our agricultural industries. So we felt that by matching these two up, we could get a, uh, we could help resolve both issues and find ways to um, create something that was greater than the sum of the two parts. And it's been a really exciting program, and it's uh, grown a lot for us in the in the last five years. Um, as I was mentioning, the average age of the U.S. farmer uh, is 57 years old, close to 60 years, and uh, the amount of, total amount of farmers has been steadily declining, and we're excuse me there, and. Um, and we're dealing with a military that is disproportionately coming from rural America. So these are the these are where the veterans are coming from. They left our farm communities. Uh, they're going home to our farm communities. They're they're perfectly positioned uh, geographically um, in family and opportunity, in temperament, and in experience to enter into agricultural uh, livelihood. Um, this is me. Um, I've mentioned my history. Uh, it's uh, been a pretty unique and exciting uh, career for me to get to uh, um, ride the increase in interest in organic production around the country. And uh, it got me involved in a lot of uh, production ability that I'm hoping we could pass on to a new generation of American farmers. The FEC Last year, after four or five years with the, uh, uh, we began with a, what we call a fiscal sponsor in the nonprofit world. When you're a, a one person starting a nonprofit and and um, and looking for funding and beginning, we began with a with a fiscal sponsor called Community Partners in Southern California. And this April, we've transitioned where we've applied for our status uh, as a standalone nonprofit. We're waiting that status. We hope it can come as early as any day and hopefully no later than the next uh, 60 to 90 days. But one of the things we did when we when we reapplied for our, our own standalone nonprofit is we drew up uh, uh, eight sets of principles that really guide and direct our organization. And the importance about our organization is, uh, is two things, and that's that we support and embrace every part of American agriculture, even though my experience is in organics and a lot of our early supporters and a lot of the veterans' interests is in niche 
niche markets and niche agriculture because they're looking for entry ways and and they're also new and young farmers who are interested in a lot of the same things that all new young and new and young farmers are interested in uh we have no other agenda other than bringing people into the agricultural industry so we support every type of farming that a veteran may be interested in we also do not support just self-employment in farming we we think that uh, a great many opportunities for employment and uh, exist in agriculture that it's important that young people see those opportunities as well as the opportunities of self-employment and farming on their own uh, we value and recognize the contribution of every aspect of the farming community uh, including agribility and the groups that are important and key groups to um, that support farmers we acknowledge the plurality of agriculture this is really important to us because we there is a lot of people take sides in how people should or shouldn't farm these days um, it's our belief that the veterans fought for our freedom they have the freedom to choose they're going to make the right choices and our most important thing is to bring new talent and new people into agriculture find new people that want to work the land and bring everybody from wherever their position is in agriculture to work together on this one key important issue we're extremely collaborative by nature uh, when i first thought of farming i my vision was the two silos on the uh, rural landscape next to the barn and that the agricultural community and the military community they're two of our largest sectors of our economy they are the two largest departments of our federal government they have a tremendous amount of interconnectedness that no one has yet made a connection to uh, and that agriculture particularly as a place to uh, employ and support those transitioning out of the military to strengthen the rural communities for those that are sending people into the military uh, to help create food security for our nation uh, to help um, teach agriculture for uh, as part of our effort across the country and so there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, interconnectedness there and we want to be able to do that through the network of, of hundreds of great groups around the country who are already working to help people enter and support people in the agricultural community so we're extremely uh, committed to collaboration with other organizations we also take care of the whole veteran um, the veterans that contact us often have visible and sometimes invisible wounds uh, my staff is now includes six who are full-time staff people who are veterans and four half staff half-time staff people who are also veterans so 10 of the 12 of us working in the organization are uh, post 9-11 or post 2000 military veterans they're trained in dealing with the issues that the veterans deal with they deal with them themselves often they know about them they know the language they know how to work with them and they can help train other agricultural support people and the uh, the agribility network amongst others in the specific challenges and um, uh, strengths that this veteran community and, and of this particular generation has to offer us we also work to create community amongst our veterans it's been a real key to our growth and support uh, these aren't just aren't widgets they're just not people calling and and uh, looking for our support that we pass on where we can we put them in touch with each other when we can we bring them in physical contact with each other uh, we create events that veterans get to come together and spend the day visit farms talk about farming learn about farm finances 
um, learn about support for farmers, but also to put them in contact with each other. We very recently had our second annual uh, National Women's Conference uh, uh, for Empowering Women Veteran Conference in Louisville and uh, had close to a hundred women veterans from around the country come to that. And it's just a very powerful sense of community because we're dealing with a population uh, right now where only 1% of our of the Americans serve in ag agriculture, 1% serve in the military. And the intersection of two is, of the two is limited. It's small and it's a, um, there's a powerful bond when we can bring them together. We've developed in the last five years um, what we figure are really key programs that can help benefit the veterans that contact us. We've now been contacted uh, by over 2,000 veterans in our, in our um, database from around the country, from all 50 states. Uh, yesterday it was somebody in Virgin Islands, so we probably have, uh, we definitely have Guam and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, the different provinces, and we hear from those still serving in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, our programs include informational resources and mentor matching, where a veteran calls us up and says, uh, I'm interested in growing sweet corn. I'm in Pennsylvania. I just got 20 acres of land. This is just off of yesterday's call. How can you help me? Who can you hook me up with to find out further information? So we're creating a national referral service. Um, the amount of veterans we're hearing from is greatly increased, but the amount of people that we're working with and partner with is greatly increasing. What we're hoping over time is that our partners ships can be stronger and more defined and more definitive and we don't just act as a yellow page but if we send somebody refer somebody to one of our partners that we can hear back that between us we can work together to to create a support for the veteran and, and their transition uh, we know two veterans that come our way uh, there's no cookie cutter at all. I don't think we hear any two that exactly fall in the same in this in the same pattern. Like I said, they're from all 50 states. They break into those that have farming experience, those that are heir to farming land, to to family land, those that are brand new to agriculture, those that want to be employed, those that want to be self-employed. Every type of crop every type of scale, every type of capacity, um, able-bodied, injured, and uh, um, the gamut. So it takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one connection and one-on-one -on -one work with each individual veteran to cater or support to their specific um, needs and issues and interests, and that's where our partners come in. We do have a small grants program. Um, as a, a month or two since we began this in November uh, 2011, we've given out about $350,000 in small grants. We primarily target um, veterans with disabilities, but it's uh, depending on the funder. It's not limited to that. And when we do target a small grant, it's uh, when we we work with the veteran and our team of advisors and uh, make sure they have a business plan and make sure we identified the purchase of some item that can make a significant um, significantly leverage their entry into an agricultural um, enterprise um, there's their statistic about 350,000 um, fellows this is one of our fellows here and um, Bonita represents about 15% of our of our veterans are that we work with are female veterans. There's a really growing population percentage of both the beginning farmers and the um, agricultural community. 
one of the most exciting new projects we have is a we've just reached an agreement with the state of Kentucky. The Kentucky Department of Agriculture has created a label that they've been promoting in Kentucky for farm for Kentucky farmers who are also military veterans called Homegrown by Heroes, and we are taking this nationally without the Kentucky Proud. Um, statement on the bottom we're redesigning the logo with their agreement and um, and we will um, be promoting uh, and and marketing this label nationally and in partnership with the major um, produce uh, retail wholesale and uh, industry organizations around the country so we're really excited about this the veterans are extremely excited about this so one of the things that one of the things that um, we'll go back to this, but one of the things that we've been doing with Agribility, Agribility is probably when we opened our office in 2009, the first organization, the first person that knocked on my door and offered to help was Martha Stiles, the from Agribility in California. So we've developed a really important partnership with Agribility because um, because we let me turn my volume down here way up there okay is that better so we we've developed a our partnership with Agribility is is very important um, number one, because of the high number of veterans that are coming to us with disabilities, and number two, because this is a this is a new challenge. There's no other organization in the country that's done the work that Agribility has to create the infrastructure and the knowledge, the support, and the capacity to help a disabled farmer. So when we come and farmers contact us and want to go into agriculture with disabilities, uh, Agribility has been a fantastic and wonderful support. Um, one of the other things we're doing is we're going to be here going forward. Um, we're developing chapters uh, this, this uh, Saturday. We're having the first uh, annual all-day meeting of Farmer Veteran Coalition of Iowa, and we're finalizing the agreement. It should be done either before or soon after that meeting, uh, a, a charter agreement with that chapter that can be modeled in many other states. Uh, we'll be meeting with uh, a team of people in Nebraska, and we've been doing the same in Kansas, and in each of the... In Iowa, the meeting's going to be held at Easter Seals. Uh, Easter Seals is somewhat of the surrogate for agribility in Iowa, where there's not a chapter. In every state where there is an agribility chapter, we want to make sure agribility is one of the key players on our board reform and in the launch of that chapter in that area. So we hope to hear from agribility people around the country about their participation with us in that effort. Um, we will also be working with Agribility to um, co-support a position that'll be uh, employed directly through Agribility, the National Agribility Project at Purdue, but we'll specifically work with farmer veteran outreach around the country and interface with our organization as well as it all others that are working to help veterans transition into agriculture. Um, part of our network includes a, a very recent, exciting 16-page um, uh, publication called the Partnership Agreement with the American Farm Bureau Federation and Farmer Veteran Coalition, and um, one done recently with the Farm Credit Services and one that's being done with the National Farmers Union. So we're going forward with partnerships with some of the largest farming organizations in the country 
uh, between them, there's uh, about six and a half million members and um, quite a few thousand employees who can help with our efforts. So they're going to make great national partners with us and great regional partners. Um, so any efforts by an AgriBuilty chapter um, to work in your area with veterans, you can not only bring us in, but we can we can bring in um, these important partners and allies into into those efforts. Uh, this is mentioning some vital statistics uh, about the number of veterans we work with that we're forming chapters, and our our belief in financial mentoring and literacy that I mentioned before. Uh, Farm Credit is going to be helping us with that program. We have also are bringing on four staff people around the country who are subject matter experts. They are all military veterans. One is a veterinarian from Maine that is going to be helping with food safety planning for any veteran farms. Uh, one is a young attorney from um, New York State that helps with free assistance to veterans that are starting their farms, free legal assistance. And then um, Chet from Nebraska will begin in January 50% time. And he's a certified financial planner um, that's been working with a major financial institution in the state of Nebraska overseeing financial planning for farm families. And so he's going to help with business planning. And uh, these are going to be tremendous new services for veterans going into our program. And they'll be uh, able to um, be accessible um, to AgriBility and, and our partners as well. The, this explains these wars, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have been the two longest wars in American history. They've also been the two fought by the least amount of people. We have veterans in our network who have had as many as nine combat tours um, since these, uh, the global war on terror began after 9-11. Uh, the amount of veterans who, who have to deal with physical or, or invisible wounds and trauma from their service is very high. And it's very, very important that we have a network to support them. We feel like agriculture and opportunity in agriculture is a, a tremendous service we could do to these young men, when, men and women and a, um, a, a great thing we could be offering them. And uh, we look forward to your help with it. Um, like I said, we believe that AgriBility is in the unique position to, to help these disabled veterans. We can be a conduit for veterans. Some agribility groups have mentioned that they want to help veterans but don't know how to get in touch with them. Uh, we can help you get in touch with those in your area. Uh, we can work together on this and we look forward to increasing the amount of veterans that we work together and, and work together to support and help. Uh, this is just showing some of the wide range of veterans we work with. I'll go through this a little bit and then I'll try to leave some time for some questions. But um, um, this young man uh, came out of the Navy uh, just a couple years ago. His wife retired herself just last year and uh, they've started a business. We bought them honey uh, 27 beehives and they're making mead. So it's uh, a lot of veterans are looking for real unique and niche marketing. His business is doing great and uh, it's an exciting new product and we look forward to labeling it with the Homegrown by Hero labels. Uh, Mark and Denise Beyer are both uh, Marine Corps veterans. Um, veterans of, um, of the Mark was injured in Iraq. He's a double amputee. Uh, we helped set them both up to make maple syrup on their farm in upstate New York. Uh, uh, bought them a an evaporator. They're going into their third winter uh, production with the evaporator. Business is booming and um, they're really looking forward to the Homegrown by Hero label. Um, Mickey Clayton is a um, Native American veteran who's gone into raising um, 
uh, Navajo churro sheep. Uh, she's actually got quite a larger herd now. Um, she has a, a injury in her leg and um, she's, we, we helped get her a squeeze so she could do the uh, handle her sheep. She now has 140 of these uh, really colorful Navajo sheep at her farm in Oregon. So um, Terrell's uh, raising poultry in Arkansas, also a disabled veteran. Um, he's it maybe his fourth or fifth year now farming and he's expanding his business, uh, hiring other veterans to work with them and um, is really quite the, um, like many of these young men and women, um, you know, a leader wants to continue serving and wants to help others. Um, so Mickey retired out of the Navy and has gone into urban farming in New York. Uh, it's another example of the deep desire to look at farming as a continued service. So we have a number of veterans that have chosen the path of urban farming. Here's our contact information. And we look forward. I, I could see the list of some of the people attending and many of you I know and uh, look forward to continuing to know. And many of you we hope to hear from and uh, we will be working close with Paul and Dr. Field and and uh, Kate and the team in Purdue and, and each of you uh, to help these veterans and uh, help them get get a good start in their careers in agriculture. Thank you, Paul. I'm going to hand it over to Paul and Thanks very much, Michael. Appreciate all that information, and I'm sure the uh, AgriBility staff members are really uh, excited about the possibilities of collaborating with you and reaching out to veterans in their own states. If you have questions, uh, again, feel free to either type some in the chat window or raise your hand using the raise hand icon, and we will do our best to get you plugged in so that you can ask your questions. And while we're getting ready for those, I'd like to do our poll questions. If you could first let us know your affiliation, if you work with a particular group, Michael uh, mentioned the uh, joint position that we're working on with uh, between AgriBility at the national level and Farmer Veteran Coalition. And I will uh, let you know that that position was just posted on the Purdue uh, employment website. And uh, we plan to send out an email uh, the next couple days that has a link directly to that position announcement so that if you know of anybody in your area that would be interested in possibly applying for that, uh, they will be free to do that. So it looks like, again, as we expect, most people on this webinar are AgriBility staff members. The next question asks about the information that was shared, whether you found it to be valuable and met your expectations. Okay, thank you for your input on that. The next ask about the technology we use today. If you found it to be effective and usable. If you had any specific problems, please let us know in the chat window.
Okay, it looks like people got along all right with the technology today. And finally, based on today's session, would you attend another session in this series? Um, so the question is, do you have any tips on getting your foot in the door with the VA? Uh, it's a, the VA is a large organization, and it's definitely um, uh, been a little slower for us to get to know than, for, for example, my, my introduction to the USDA. But uh, the VA is becoming very, very supportive of us. And... Um, and we get to attend regular um, NGO meetings at the VA and uh, talk to their their directors and their leaders. So um, I'm not exactly sure what somebody means by getting the foot in the door, but we can possibly help with the connections uh, for somebody that is looking for those connections. If we knew a little more exactly what you were looking at, but the VA has a, it's a, it's like I said, it's a, it's a large organization. Um, its staff is all over the country, and uh, we may be able to help you find the person you want to talk, you want to speak to. The statistics, we're, we are working on our statistics right now. We definitely have uh, statistics in terms of how many veterans have contacted us, uh, which branch they're from, when they serve, uh, female, male, um, and some on the disabilities, um, difference on the deployments. The information about their farming careers were we're still processing, and uh, we've switched to a new database uh, this year. It's collecting a lot of great information for us, and that's going to tell us a lot more. In general, what we find is about 25% of the veterans that contact us are direct heirs to a farm family and returning to a family farm. About 25% uh, have had no experience with farming. A little larger percentage is uh, what I call like one step removed. Um, grandfather had a farm, the uncle had a farm down the road, their neighbor had a farm that they worked on in the summer. So they have some knowledge and experience with the farm lifestyle and the farm work and attraction to it, but not a direct heirs to it. We will definitely be attending the National Training Workshop in Kentucky and, um, in March and April, and uh, we look forward to it. I'm not sure about who's speaking and what's the schedule, but um, uh, we love Louisville and um, Linda and John and the team in Kentucky has been great to work with and we look forward to that. Um, Ryan's wonderful. We're trying to build, Ryan's a young uh, Marine veteran from Wisconsin. He's actually grew up on a large organic farm in Illinois. So he both, Spent 10 years in the military and um, uh, went through quite a bit of combat in Iraq. So he's an example of a really bright, uh, exemplary young man who with both uh, one foot in agriculture and one foot in the, um, in the military. And he's a great addition to our team, absolutely. How do we determine the qualification? Uh, we missed that question. Sorry. How 
How do you determine the qualifications for either the grant applications or the other programs? The grants is the hardest because we really get asked a lot. Um, we're probably, we're only able to give grants to about 10% of the veterans that we ask. Um, we almost uh, want to shy, some people on our staff want to shy away from letting too many people know about it, but it's also a program we hope to build and we hope to find other um, foundations and corporate sponsors of often a, a small purchase or a purchase of a used tractor, a greenhouse, um, breeding stock for livestock can really do a lot to helping help a veteran get started and encourage them. They're reviewing their business plan is real important. We're very careful not to grant somebody that hasn't put a little bit, got themselves started somewhat. Uh, we don't want to be their first um, dime in the game and we want to see that they're committed, that they've gone forward. So um, we have a review team of seven nationally that have all had um, extensive and successful careers in agriculture in one aspect of it or another. And so um, we're very selective and we work hard to um, get good people, but we also rely on our partners so um, to refer people to us. And it, it, that's some place where somebody put AgriBility can help participate in that selection process and AgriBility teams can help recommend people to us. Um, that would be very helpful. We'd be glad to help get AgriBility listed on VA resource list. Um, that's something that I think um, we can speak with uh, Paul and Dr. Field about and, and, and um, my team and see what we could do to help get it uh, and, and recognize it. The Farmer Veteran Coalition has printed a 40-page resource guide for veteran careers in agriculture. We've made some inroads in distributing that to um, active duty service members and some of those that are uh, as they transition out through the transition assistance program. Uh, we hope to get that more widely distributed. We're going to do a second edition that's going to update our service and our partners a little more, but there's a, uh, a page in the guide about AgriBility and its services and we definitely want to um, continue that and make that available. We do work with the American Legion. The American Legion has a, uh, a national memo of, a memo of understanding with the USDA to reach out to rural veterans. Um, I spoke at their most recent national conference in, in um, uh, Houston in August, and they're very interested in helping where we can. Uh, they're targeting a few states, Iowa and California, um, to help us in the, uh, in the front end of this partnership. But uh, they, they're there to partner with us in other states, and so we work very closely. PBA, uh, I'm not sure which the PBA is, that's um, Disabled Veterans, DVA, Disabled Veterans of America, I'm not sure which organizations being referred to there, but but um, all the paralyzed veterans of America, sorry. Um, no, we haven't been in contact with them. We would love to. We've um, recently received funding and support from the Wounded Warrior Project, which is a newer organization, and um, it's specifically going to fund um, outreach, an employment position, uh, employment developer, for our organization that could also be accessed. Um, but we'd love to meet Paralyzed Veteran America group and see how we can work together. So last question, have you worked with many veterans with severe PTSD? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. The, we've, we've dealt with um, people, veterans with um, extremely traumatic um, experiences 
and that have had a very hard time with their reentry. Um, we've been very fortunate that we haven't lost any. Um, the suicide rate is very high, and um, we look forward to um, working in collaboration with AgriBility on the 24-hour hotline for veterans. But um, we also have a staff that's very um, experienced and um, astute and capable of helping veterans with PTSD. So that is something that we can help you with. Um, whereas AgriBility probably has definitely has much more experience than we would with the physical injuries and in agriculture that any AgriBility staff people and team members that want help with um, somebody with PTSD or traumatic brain injury as well, but particularly PTSD, that is something that you can contact with us and um, we can help you um, figure out support for that. Yes, the guide's online, and we could also send hard copies. We're just reprinting more, but um, the resource guide is online, and it's available. Well, thanks hey. very much, Michael. We, we definitely appreciate your input there. Well, thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in and listening, and we look forward to working with, with everyone. And uh, just a couple notes, uh, we will be getting up the archives, if not Friday after this conference is over, then uh, by at least Tuesday of next week, we'll try to get everything up on our website. And uh, it was mentioned about the uh, National Training Workshop in Lexington, and I wanted to let you know that we have confirmed as a keynote speaker a young man named Josh Blyle, B-L-E-I-L-L. -L -L. And he is a w, double um, below, above the knee amputee from uh, the Gulf Wars, uh, was a Marine, and he's also the uh, Indianapolis Colts community spokesperson. So he's going to be sharing during our, our banquet about his experiences, and I understand he's an excellent speaker. So just one more of many reasons for you to get signed up for the National Training Workshop in Lexington, and we uh, hope to see you there. So that uh, ends this afternoon sessions, and we will plan to be back here in the morning at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Our first session is scheduled to be on product liability in regard to agricultural equipment, which may be useful to you as someone dealing with assistive technology. And then our final presentation tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m., Dick Brzezowski from Maine AgriBility is going to be talking about strategies for selecting different types of enterprises for individuals with limitations. So we hope to uh, have you participating in those sessions and we wish you a good